Hey, you're here with Ben, and I want to show you Near From Home's personal favourite Christmas markets, right here in our current home of Munich, Germany. I absolutely love the Christmas season, but with so many markets to explore, where should you start? And are there any hidden gems? Well, you've come to the right place because this channel is always about sharing my hard-earned wisdom with you at home, so that you can have an easier time when you're travelling. Today, we're going to be looking at my personal six essential Munich Christmas markets. Now, as a local, naturally I have my personal favourites, but this video is going to be ordered from most to least obvious, so stick around and see how long you can keep up. Will you know all six, or do I have some surprises in here for you? Either way, let me know in the comments below how far you get, but without further ado, let's get started. Let's get started with, of course, Munich's main central market, the Christkindlmarkt at Marienplatz. Definitely the most obvious, but still entirely worth mentioning, as I think it can often be misunderstood by tourists. It's a bit of a labyrinth. You see, the core of the market is indeed held within Munich's main central square, nestled right up against the Christmas tree and our famous neo-Gothic town hall, which a lot of tourists seem to think is a church. But no, instead of merely being confined to that square, the Christkindlmarkt mark spreads itself all throughout the Altstadt. In all though, this market in particular is incredibly typical. It's the calibrated meter stick that all other markets should be measured against. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. If you're looking to eat your most traditional of snacks and buy your most traditional of knickknacks, then honestly, here's your place to do it. Which is why this market comes first in my list and should come first in your itinerary as well. It's really interesting to see how all the other markets coming later in this video will attempt to subvert the classic formula to entice you away. However, don't be too hasty or rush through it, as there's far more here to explore than you'd think. Specifically, it's maze-like nature that I mentioned earlier, as this market actually spans the distance between the old fortress gates of Munich, those of Karlstor, Zenlingator, and Isator. Each gate has a completely different vibe, but since they wind and merge back all together in the middle, I personally don't consider them different markets merely extensions of the core. The pedestrian-only roads running east-west and north-south between these gates are dotted with plenty of cute market stalls, and little tucked away corners for Glühwein, so these streets are well worth the jaunt. My personal favourite gate, perhaps controversially, is Isator, which though admittedly is in the middle of a rather ugly road, manages to stay incredibly epic with a giant mulled wine cauldron sitting centrally in the tower itself. I love it, especially at night. Most people's favourite gate though, understandably, is Karl's Tor, with its custom Alpine Hut themed ice rink. It's incredible to remember how they constructed this whole thing in a matter of days. It's usually a summer fountain, an empty space for all the cool kids to eat their McDonald's. Personally, I can't skate for the life of me, and I don't feel like embarrassing myself on centre stage for the amusement of all the market goers. But having a hot drink while watching everyone else glide gracefully past? has become a bit of a Christmas staple for me nowadays. Walking back between the gates, don't forget to stop by the Rindermarkt and Viktualienmarkt, perhaps my two favourite spaces to find some breathing room amongst the crowded stalls. It's a great place to just stop, relax, and people watch. In sum, don't give up on this market just for being obvious. No one is too cool to enjoy the central Munich market, and hopefully with the help of my maps and tips, you won't accidentally miss out on a cool corner too. But what do you think? Are you coming to this market? Have I missed your favourite corner? Let's chat in the comments below. And if you'd like to see more of Marienplatz and some first-hand impressions, then you know I have you covered with a dedicated guide to this most traditional of markets, which you should definitely watch after this video is done of course. But now, where are we heading to next? to the Kinesische term, of course, the second most obvious market to my mind, though pardon my pronunciation, it's a real tongue twister. If you've been reading blogs or looking on Google Maps, you might know it instead as the Chinese Tower, much easier. This market blew me away during my first ever Christmas season here in Germany. How could you ask for anything more? And how can a city market have such a woodland feel? It's unthinkable, which is why the Englische Garten is one of my favourite aspects about living in 
Munich. This market also introduced me to Eierlikör, or Egglikör, the strong, tastier cousin to eggnog, which the lovely market lady was more than merry to give me as many samples as required to get me hooked. Mission accomplished. I love the forest village vibes here, and though yes, again, I know this is a pretty obvious suggestion, it's still one of my absolute favorite markets as a local. I just can't get enough. Plus, this market is perhaps the most kid-friendly of them all, especially when it snowed, since child and child at heart alike can have a go at curling in front of the masses or end up joining in an impromptu snowball fight in one of the surrounding meadows. The food, drink, and crafts are all pretty similar to what you'll find in Marienplatz, but this ambiance cannot be beaten. If you want to see more though, I actually included this market in the exact same video I mentioned earlier, all about the three biggest markets in Munich, so if you were on the fence about giving us a like, subscribe, and watching some more Christmas market content, then hopefully by now I'll have you sold. You need to visit this traditional snowy Christmas market. This video is clearly jam-packed with a ton of markets and hard-earned recommendations. I bet a few of you have even already begun taking notes and planning future itineraries. You're my favorites. But unfortunately, once this video is over, I can't really help you anymore, unless you DM me on Instagram. I mean, you can't exactly replay this video when you're strolling around Munich sipping on Glühwein. So to fix that, we've gone another extra mile just for you and created a ton of complete itineraries, suggestion lists, and guides available for you at this link, nearfromhome.com forward slash itineraries. Scan the QR code, click the link in the description, and take Near From Home with you in your pocket. This is the first time we've ever done anything like this, so I really do hope you appreciate and enjoy the extra effort. It's going to be a great way to support the channel, and the guides will include bonus recommendations that couldn't quite make it into the video, plus lots of behind-the-scenes notes and stories. My favorite my favorite feature though is how we've geotagged every single recommendation for you, so now you can stroll around Munich with Near From Home guiding you every step of the way, recommending our favorite spots that are close to you and showing you around. Naturally, you can send a tip and buy me a Glühwein if you're so inclined and think I've earned it. Plus, we're also now offering itinerary spot checks and planning support too. So if you've got a trip that's pretty much done and you just want to get a second pair of eyes and my opinion, then I've got your back. So please do check out that link and support us if you can. But now we've got more markets to visit. But now for our third suggestion, let's get a little bit quirky. With Winter Tollwood, held in the exact same spot as Oktoberfest just two months prior, it astounds me that they can so quickly remove all the beer tents and roller coasters to create this hipster winter wonderland. Considered the cool Christmas market, Tollwood subverts all the traditions to do something different. You'll either love it or you'll hate it, and I'm a big fan. What has me hooked is the food, as this is the foodie market, with stands and stalls offering dishes from around the world. Greek, Mexican, African, and a bit of Bavarian if you need that too, you can find anything in the food tent. I wouldn't make this my very first market of the season, but when I need to reset my palate and try something new, I go to Tollwood. Everything is fair trade and organic with a huge emphasis on sustainability and upcycling. So yeah, maybe you won't be buying your grandma her present from here, unless she's especially cool, but you'll find something definitely unique. And you'll be speaking directly to the artisan who made it, something that can't always be said at the more mass-produced markets. Tollwood also knows how to put on a good show, with tons of live performances staged amongst the different tents. I think that's why this market of them all is so popular with locals. There's always a reason to come back two, three or more times during the season, and you'll never feel like you've seen it all. Now, Tollwood was the last of our large Munich markets. It's all small local stuff from here on out. So how are you doing? You keeping up? Have you known them all so far? I mean, I hope so, but I wonder if you'll be familiar with what's coming up next. Oh, and if mentioning Oktoberfest perked your ears earlier, and you want to compare fall versus winter festivals in Germany, then may I recommend our Oktoberfest without the tourists, as it's probably been one of my favorite videos to shoot ever, and I'm sure you'll love it. Now, onto the locals' markets, starting with the medieval markt, because no lie, this is one of my favorites in all of Germany. And the one 
one that I, as a local, just keep coming back to again and again. Though that might be because I'm a bit of a dork and love anything medieval themed. You've all seen how I talk about fortress walls on this channel. And even though this market might be quite small, all of the little details are on point. Every stall is completely unique and immersive. I can spend longer in this tiny market than I can in many of the bigger ones. There's just so much to look at and do. No repetitions. The crafts are all unique and interesting, the performances are lively and fun, but the real star of the show is the food and drink. Leave your simple mulled wines and Christmas cups at home because this is an old school mead market. Incredible. But my favourite drink to get here is the Feuerzangenbolo, a dressed up mulled wine topped with a high proof rum soaked sugar cube that they've lit on fire. Best seen at night, dropping delicious caramel directly into your cup. It is fantastic. And the fact that these drinks all come in themed clay goblets, I'll tell you, it's the first time I've ever truly wanted to leave the cup deposit behind and take one home for myself. In fact, maybe this year, I think I will. Sorry, Camille. It's not all drinks though. The food here is also excellent. The Flammkuchen especially. A German style flatbread pizza well worth waiting in line for. I suppose in all, I don't think the food itself is all too different than what you'd get at a traditional market, though it sure does taste better, but the food stalls themselves are way more interesting and themed, which to me elevates this whole experience and makes it that much more memorable. Assuming, of course, you like medieval Europe, which I definitely do. I mean, I imagine plenty of you out there aren't surprised at all by my glowing review. If you came along with me and watched my best medieval festival in Germany video, then you already know how easily I can get swept up in the ambiance. It's just so much fun fun. And if you missed that video, then you'll definitely want to check it out. I mean, how cool is that hat? But not to mention, if you also would like to see more of this medieval Christmas market, then of course, do watch my full guide to visiting Munich's local Christmas markets for all of my best footage and personal first-hand impressions. Huzzah! But what if you aren't obsessed with the 1200s though? Where do traditional Christmas loving locals go? Well I have asked around and the current consensus is that the very best local spot to visit is the Heidhausen Christmas Market. Whereas all the other markets today have attempted to subvert Marienplatz's formula to do something different and add a spin, Heidhausen simply took it at face value and elevated it directly. It isn't quirky or different, it's just better. With a smaller and local residential vibe, this is a market for the people who live here, versus Marienplatz, which can be a little bit of a main market for visitors. Here in Heidhausen, this is a traditional city Christmas market at its best. The food is the same, but nicer, and the knickknacks are similar, but made by artisans. And all in all, there's just a much more relaxed and family-friendly atmosphere. Let me put it to you this way. The people that came here to the Heidhausen market didn't come because Cost there is a Christmas market. They came because they live here, because they always come to Heidhausen on a Sunday, because it's always a lovely and pleasant place to be, to catch up with friends and let the kids run around. It just so happens that when they show up in December, they can swap out their summer Aperol spritzes and t-shirts for bundling up and grabbing a Glühwein. So if you want to get a glimpse at what it's really like to live in Munich at its best, and why I struggle to imagine living anywhere else, you need to check out this market. Seeing is believing. Lastly, I have a special spooky treat to round out our essential Munich markets that admittedly is less of a market and more of a special event within one. That's right, we're finally going to talk about a Krampuslauf, an incredibly awesome event that feels as though the best parts of Halloween and Christmas made a mashup. For those of you not in the know, Krampus is an ancient figure in Alpine folklore, a horrifying sidekick to his buddy Saint Nikolaus. The Krampus rules the naughty list, but instead of giving out coal or stoic disapprovals, Krampus deals in cold hard beatings. 
the Krampuslauf is essentially a parade, and it's your safest introduction to this Christmas-themed demon goat monster. They happen all throughout the Alps, but Munich's is one of the largest. Special Krampus clubs come from all over the Alps to strut their stuff down our central streets. Marienplatz obviously being the best place to view the action. You might have noticed the incredible variety amongst their costumes, and how each group will build a spooky theme from which to build their outfits. Undead warriors, fluffy moss-ridden monstrosities, all the horns you could ask for, these outfits are unbelievable and they look even more impressive in person. My favourite part though? I love watching cruel parents push their children to the front of the crowds as the kids reconcile in real time with their past behaviours. Have they really been good? The performers naturally will try to scare you, so be warned, you may get a smack or a light caning if you step out of line, but they won't break your bones at a Krampuslauf. Probably. So how did you do? Did you know all of these markets or did I have some surprises in here for you? I really hope I did, so let me know in the comments below. Getting to share these essential Munich Christmas markets with you has been awesome, and I hope you leave this video not only feeling inspired to visit Munich during this most magical of seasons, but I hope I've also helped empower you to get out there and make some memories for yourself too. Between this compilation video, my new online itineraries, and my first hand impression full guide videos, I really do hope I've managed to give you all you need to get out there and dive right in. If you haven't watched all of my Christmas guides, then make sure you do, as if you've made it this far and enjoyed this video, then I know you'll love them too. Lastly, if you wouldn't mind liking the video if you've liked it and subscribing to the channel if you think I've earned it. Supporting the channel really is as simple as that, and it means the world to me. Again, here's the link to my online itineraries if you need it, and I'll see you soon for even more amazing Christmas marketing content. It's gonna be a long winter, and I've got some amazing places to show you. You're not gonna want to miss out.